day everyone welcome to another episode of quick math tutorials today we are going to learn about properties of a parallelogram for our first property we have in a parallelogram any two opposite sides are congruent in illustration we have the opposite side h e and o m Thus, they are congruent or equal. In symbol, we have the line segment HE is congruent to the line segment OM. Another opposite sides are HO and EM. So, they are congruent. In symbol, we have line segment HO is congruent to line segment EM. Second property is, in a parallelogram, any two opposite angles are congruent. In illustration, the opposite angles are angle H and angle M. Thus, they are equal or congruent. In symbol, we have, angle H is congruent to angle M. Another opposite angles are, Angle E and angle O, and they are congruent. In symbol, we have angle E is congruent to angle O. Third property is, in a parallelogram, any two consecutive angles are supplementary. In illustration, the consecutive angles are angle H and angle O, thus they are supplementary. When we say supplementary, the sum of the two angles is equal to 180 degrees. So we have the measure of angle H plus the measure of angle O is equal to 180 degrees. Another consecutive angles are angle O and angle M. So we have the measure of angle O plus the measure of angle M is equal to 180 degrees. Another consecutive angles are angle M and angle E. So we have the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle M is equal to 180 degrees. And last, we have the consecutive angles angle e, H and angle E. So we have the measure of angle H plus the measure of angle E is equal to 180 degrees. For our fourth property is, the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. In figure, we have the diagonal HM and the diagonal EO bisect each other at point S. When we say bisect, it means that they cut each other into two equal parts. So we have this line segment HS is congruent to line segment SM. Or in symbol, we have the line segment HS is congruent to the line segment SM. Another is for this diagonal, we have the line segment ES is congruent to the line segment SO. Or in symbol, we have the line segment ES is congruent to the line segment SO. For our last property, we have a diagonal of a parallelogram divides the parallelogram into two congruent triangles. In figure, suppose we have a parallelogram HOME and we have its diagonal EO. So this diagonal, it cuts the parallelogram into two congruent triangles. So we have this triangle is congruent to this triangle. Or in symbol, we have the triangle EHO is congruent to the triangle OME. Or, so we have the same parallelogram and then we have this diagonal. So we have the diagonal HM. So it divides this parallelogram into two congruent triangles. So this triangle is congruent to this triangle. Or in symbol, we have 
The triangle HEM is congruent to the triangle MOH. Now let's have our examples. We will apply those properties in solving the problems. So suppose we have a parallelogram A, B, C, and D, and its diagonals AC and BD. For our first example, we are given AB is equal to 3x minus 5 centimeters. BC is equal to 2y minus 7 centimeters. CD is equal to x plus 7 centimeters. And AD is equal to y plus 8 centimeters. So in figure, we have the line segment AB is 3x minus 5. BC is 2y minus 7. CD is x plus 7. And AD is y plus 8. So we will find first A, what is the value of x? B, how long is the line segment AB? C, what is the value of y? And D, how long is the line segment AD? Let's solve first for letter A. What is the value of x? As you can see in the figure, our x here are on the opposite sides of this parallelogram. And we have a property in a parallelogram. Any two opposite sides are congruent. Therefore, these sides AB and DC are congruent or equal. So for our solution, we have 3x minus 5 is just equal to x plus 7. For our next step, we will put all those terms that has variables on the left side. And for those constant or those who don't have a variable, we will put them on the right side. So here, first, since we have 3x and this and 3x has the variable of x, so we will put it on the left side. And since it is already in the left side, so we will just copy. So we have 3x. Next, we have this x. Since x is on the right side, so we will transfer it to the left side. So for us to transfer it to the left side, we will just add negative x. So we will add negative x on the both sides. So we have negative x. And here, x minus x is just equal to 0. Now, for our constant, so here, 7 is constant. And since it is already on the right side, so we will just copy. So we have here 7. And for our negative 5, since negative 5 is on the left side, so we will put it on the right side. So for us to put negative 5 to the right side, we will just add both sides by positive 5. So we have plus 5 and here, negative 5 plus 5 is just equal to 0. Thus, we have 3x minus x is equal to 7 plus 5. And 3x minus x is 2x equals 7 plus 5 is equal to 12. Now, we will divide both sides by 2 for us to get the value of x. So 2 divided by 2 is just equal to x and 12 divided by 2 is just equal to 6. Now we have x is equal to 6. Therefore, the value of x is 6. For letter B, how long is the line segment AB? So for our solution, since we already solved for the value of x where x is equal to 6, therefore, we will just substitute the value of x to the line segment AB. So here in our figure, our AB is just equal to 3x minus 5. By substitution, we have 3, so our x will become 6, so we have 3 times 6, 
minus 5. And 3 times 6 is equal to 18. And 18 minus 5 is equal to 13. Therefore, the line segment AB is just equal to 13 centimeters. For letter C, what is the value of Y? So in our figure, our Y here is on the side AD and BC. And they are on the opposite sides. So again, we can apply the property that any two opposite sides are congruent. For, so for our solution, we have 2y minus 7 is equal to y plus 8. Or you can have y plus 8 is equal to 2y minus 7. They are just the same. So here again, we will put all those terms that has a variable in the left side and for the constant we will put them on the right side so here 2y since it is already in the left side we will just copy so we have 2y and here since y is on the right side we will put it on the left side by adding both sides negative y thus we have negative y here and here y minus y is just equal to zero for our constant here we have eight since it is already on the right side so we will just copy eight for our negative seven since it is on the left side so we will put it to the left right side so we will add both sides by positive 7 so we have plus 7 and here we have negative 7 plus 7 is just equal to 0 thus we have 2y minus y is equal to 8 plus 7 then we have 2y minus y is equal to y and 8 plus 7 is equal to 15. Therefore, the value of y is 15. For letter D, how long is the line segment AD? So here in our figure, we have the line segment AD and it is equal to y plus 8. Since we already solved for the value of y which is equal to 15, we will just substitute the value of y. Now we have y which is equal to 15, so it becomes 15 plus 8. And 15 plus 8 is just equal to 23. Therefore, the line segment AD is 23 centimeters. Now let's have our second example. Angle BAD measures 2A plus 25, while angle BCD measures 3A minus 15. We will find the measure of the angle BAD. So here in our figure, we have the angle BAD. So we have here the angle A, which is equal to 2A plus 25. And the angle BCD or angle C measures 3A minus 15. As you can notice, the two angles are on the opposite side of a parallelogram. And we have this property states that any two opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent or they are just equal. So for our solution, since these two angles are just equal or congruent, so we have 3a minus 15 is equal to 2a plus 25. Or you can have 2a plus 25 is equal to 3a minus 15. They are just the same. So for our next step, we will put the terms that has a variable on the left side while the constant, we will put them on the right side. So we have 3a minus 2a is equal to copy 25. And here we have positive, 20, positive 15. 
3a minus 2a is equal to a, 25 plus 15, we have 40. Thus, our a is equal to 40. And we are not yet done. We still need to find the measure of the angle BAD. So here in our fig figure, the measure of the angle BAD, we have 2A plus 25. So we have here. For our next step, we will substitute the value of A. So we have 2. So our A becomes 40 plus 25. 2 times 40 is equal to 80. And 80 plus 25 is equal to 105. Therefore, the measure of the angle BAD is equal to 105 degrees. For our last example, we have angle ABC measures A, while angle BCD measures 2A minus 45. What is the measure of the angle BCD? So here in our figure, we have the angle ABC or angle B, which is equal to A, and the angle BCD or angle C, which is equal to 2A minus 45. For our solution, as you can see in the figure, the angle B and angle C they are consecutive angles, and we have a property of a parallelogram. Any two consecutive angles are supplementary. Thus, angle B plus angle C is equal to 180 degrees. Now, we have A plus 2A minus 45, or our angle C, is equal to 180, since they are supplementary. Then for our next step, we will put the, all the terms that has a variable on the left side while the constant will be on the right side. So we have a plus 2a is equal to 180 plus 45. a plus 2a is equal to 3a. 180 plus 45 is equal to 225. Now, we will divide both sides by 3. So, 3A divided by 3 is equal to A. 225 divided by 3 is equal to 75. Thus, A is equal to 75. And we are not yet done. We still need to find the measure of the angle BCD. As you can see in the figure, the measure of the angle BCD is equal to or our angle C is 2A minus 45. For our next step, we will substitute the value of A by 75. So we have 2, our A becomes 75 minus 45. 2 times 75 is equal to 150, and 150 minus 45 is equal to 105. Therefore, the measure of the angle BCD is equal to 105. So, to sum it up, the properties of a parallelogram are any two opposite sides are congruent, any two opposite angles are congruent, any two consecutive angles are supplementary, the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other, and last we have a diagonal of a parallelogram divides the parallelogram into two congruent triangles. And that ends our quick math tutorials. If you like the video, please click on the like button. If you have questions, just leave a comment below. And to be notified on my next video, please click on the subscribe button. Thank you!